Welcome back everyone to more career mode gameplay of NASCAR Heat 5. Our Daytona race went spectacular. I could not be happier with the results. We came home with a great finish in the top five as well as quite a bit of money. We got a huge portion of that race purse. So really it went just about as good as it possibly could have. Obviously we would love to have a podium finish or a victory, but given where we were with our truck, I think that was best case scenario. But before we get into spending our money and moving on to race number two, which I originally thought was going to be Atlanta, turns out it's Las Vegas. So there are a couple of things, a couple of housekeeping notes that I want to take care of. First and foremost, thank you guys for the feedback and the comments on uh, the video and really the support so far for the career mode series. That's the kind of thing that will keep this series going uh, for quite a bit into the future. And that's really what I'm hoping for. I love this series. So the housekeeping notes. First things first, I had gotten a question about stats and what kind of stats are shown for the driver. There was mentioned uh, before the release of NASCAR Heat 5 that they had increased the amount of stats available. And obviously we've only run one race. So there's not a whole lot to see on this screen. But if I go into the stat breakdown, then there was a question about, uh, can you see breakdowns per track? And it doesn't look like you can. Here, we're simply looking at the entire series and the entire season in that series. So no breakdown on a per track basis, at least not that I see to this point. If you guys see a button somewhere or an option that might lead to that, let me know. Uh, but to this point, I've been looking around on this screen as well as the breakdown, and I have not seen anything that would lead me to believe that there's any further breakdown beyond what we're seeing. The second thing is our truck. Our poor truck that I painted uh, very hastily at the beginning of the series, I came in and I made a change. The change that I made was in the base paint as well as uh, the number shadow as well as the rim color. They are all now a little bit better off. They were a good bit darker. Uh, so now I've lightened them up and I like it quite a bit better. It's not a perfect match for the Hooters uh, logo, but I think it is much better than what we had before. I'm really liking the matte design of this. And again, this is something we can play around with more as time goes on, but I am quite a bit happier with this now than I was in the future. So with those housekeeping matters uh, under control, let's come back out and talk about how we're gonna spend some money. Uh, so if we come over to our work plan, one of the things that we talked about uh, in uh, the previous video is how we're going to need to purchase an additional car. That's 48 grand. And the biggest reason why we need to purchase an additional car, uh, really two reasons. Number one, it gives us the ability to, to hire two more employees, which is really going to help us out uh, as we continue to increase the maximums for engine aero and suspension but also because we need to have two chassis so that we're not using the same chassis over and over and over because it's really going to uh, reduce the ultimate performance. Because as you can see here, we're after that race, we're at 72, 70, and 72. So we did keep a couple of points of performance after all the wear and tear is taken care of. But right now, even if we had a fully upgraded engine guy at plus 12, we're still not going to get up to 100 or even to 90. Uh, so as we continue to progress on and increase these department maximums, we're going to need to have multiple cars. So what I want to do right now is I want to purchase another chassis. So let's go ahead and press A. Now, right now what I want to do is purchase another Speedway chassis. So the reason I'm doing that is because there are so many places where this is going to work. Obviously, if we look on the right-hand side of the screen, upcoming tracks, there are a lot of speedways there. But even more important to me than that, I'm interested in uh, the fact that most of the tracks that we're going to be racing on, uh, particularly for this series, because I'm not going to try to record every race for this series, uh, Speedway is by far and away going to be the most popular. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to purchase the Speedway chassis. Now we have two that we can work on. Before we hire any employees, though, I want to take a look at these uh, department maximums. 
And I've been doing some thinking. The engine is going to be by far the most important piece to the puzzle for us. As long as we are underpowered on the engine side of things, we're not going to be able to keep up. So we're going to be pushing it just to maintain some basic pace uh, and keep up with the back of the field. So we need to get our engine upgraded. So that's the first thing I want to do. So we're going to go ahead and purchase that. That's 84 grand. So it is a large chunk. But remember, we only have to do this once. Once we have the upgrade, we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase that. Now I want to purchase, uh, or excuse me, hire some employees. We're not purchasing people here. We need to hire some employees. So I'm going to scroll over to the plus sign. We have two extra uh, slots available. So let's go ahead and hire an employee. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire another engine guy. So we have engine specialist here with Robert. Uh, then we go to Arrow. Arrow will probably be the last thing that I will hire for simply because it, from my experience in previous games, NASCAR Heat 4, 3, and so on, the aerodynamics has the least importance as far as it relates to our speed. So I'm going to leave that to last. So right now, uh, suspension, I do want another one of. I'm really looking for another engine guy. There we go. So uh, Harriet, not bad for 13 grand. Uh, she already has a plus eight on engine. She's got some other things, suspension, arrow. We don't need really any of that. Uh, the arrow might come in handy every so often. Uh, but really, I'm thinking our best bet is just to go back over here to Robert and let's get him for $120. I don't know the money. Uh, it might be cheaper uh, to get Harriet and her plus eight already for 13. I'm not sure. So we're just going to go ahead and get Robert. So we're going to hire Robert and then I want to train Robert. And let's see just how much it costs us, honestly. Uh, looks like, yeah, it's going to be about the same money as we could have got Harriet for. So turns out it would have been about that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go plus 10 right here for uh, Robert. That's going to be 36.9. Still going to leave us a little bit of money. So I'm very happy about that. That's good. Now the next person I want to hire, I'm going to hire another suspension person. So we're leaving out Arrow for the time being. Again, we're only two races into the season, or excuse me, one race into the season as far as accumulating points and finishes and everything. So uh, let's go ahead and get a Although you have to admit, I mean, come on, Carol's giving us that look like you need me on the team. That's the look she's giving me right now. But I'm sorry, Carol, you're going to have to wait just a little while. We're going to go with another suspension specialist. So Matt, uh, welcome aboard. Let's hire Matt for 120 bucks. And now Matt, uh, we need to train him. And right now, uh, our max on suspension is at 80. So we don't have anything we can do with Matt just yet. Let's see how much it's going to cost us. Uh, okay, it's going to cost us the remainder of our money to increase this to 85. So that is perfectly fine. We've gotten done basically everything I wanted to get done uh, before today's race. So we've, uh, let's go ahead and purchase that upgrade. Now we'll spend our remaining money here on Matt. It won't be a whole lot, but you can see we can get him up to three. I'll take that. And then after our Las Vegas race, we'll come in, we'll do some more upgrades, maybe upgrade our our uh, suspension again and then give Matt some more bonus points so that he can work harder and better for us. So right now we have four employees and two trucks. So which one are we going to use right now? Uh, I'm thinking we're going to need to use, can we use this first chassis? It says it needs repair. Uh, let's find out. I really am a little bit worried about trying to use this one for the next race just because of that needs repair. Uh, but it's clearly going to be the best one overall. So we're going to try it. And who knows, this might backfire against me. All right, we're going to put Robert in there. Again, really doesn't matter. Uh, then we need suspension. That'll be Harrison. Okay, that's going to get us up to 82. And car number two. So you guys pay close attention here. If this ends up biting me, that we have to end up using uh, car number two, which is not going to have near the suspension, uh, then you guys will know for the future of your own playthroughs not to do this. 
So everybody is assigned. All of our employees are taken care of. Uh, and by the way, before I do that, our next chassis, which will probably be a short track chassis, 81.5. Okay, just something to keep in mind. It'll be a little while probably before we'll do that. But $81,000 is what we'll be doing. Start the work. Accept. All right, work plan is done. Uh, now, can we use chassis number one? So select our car for the race. Uh, yes, we can. It says it needs repair, but apparently it's going to let us use it without any sort of penalty. We are on a speedway using a speedway chassis. So let's go ahead and select that. Um, everything needs that needed to be done appears to be taken care of. Now we're ready to go racing at Vegas. All right, qualifying results are in. Ross Chastain on the pole, 30.995, so just under a 31 flat. Uh, if we scroll to the back of the field, here we are at a 33.6, so we are two and a half seconds plus off the lead. And we're back here with the type of people that you would expect us to be with this early in the development of our truck. So we've got Mike Harmon back here, Clay Greenfield. So we're not the slowest car, but we are at the very back edge of what I think we can actually uh, survive on Legend difficulty. It's going to be a tough few races, and actually, that's a lot of the fun for me. So let's go ahead and get to the race. All right, here we go. Race time here in Vegas. So yeah, we know Austin Hill is definitely fast. Stuart Friesen, no surprise uh, to see him. Oh, wait, wait, he's struggling. Never mind. I thought he would have been running pretty good. Brett Moffitt, of course, champion. Uh, and once again, our rims aren't even correct. I went through all the trouble. Really be happy when they get that fixed in the game. Uh, in fact, it might even be fixed by the time you guys see this video. Sometimes my recording schedule uh, gets a few days ahead of when they post some updates and patches. So we got six laps here in stage number one. Looks like I can get down. All right, I'm barely hearing any sound here. That's, that's not good. Like, I don't hear spotter. I don't hear much of anything. I hear just barely a spotter. All right, the setup I'm using uh, since, as of me recording this video, there is no Las Vegas setup on the channel. Uh, I'm using just the beginnings of one, which is uh, based off of the Heat 4 setup, actually. All right, you're clear there. Oof. Yeah, that is... Uh, we have no grip right now. Inside, we have inside. no speed in the engine, no grip in the chassis, and uh, it is showing. Wow, so yeah, we're going to have trouble uh, keeping up with the back of the field. In fact, if we get to go in too far behind, then we might have to... Uh, drop back down a difficulty level like we did for Daytona. But I'm planning on this being the last uh, opportunity to do that here in the trucks because I believe our next race, we're going to have a much better truck that will have us at least moved up some. Yeah, so this isn't going to work. We're, we won't have quite enough speed uh, to keep up with these guys. So I'm going to drop this down to uh, the hard difficulty and we'll be right back. All right, qualifying session number two in the books. Here you can see 33.6 for us, and that puts us in sixth position. Hopefully, that'll be what we need. If the uh, difficulty level is spaced out enough, that should be enough that we can keep up and uh, fight around with the last few positions at least in the field. You can see it slowed down, uh, everyone, about a half second uh, in qualifying, so we'll see what happens in the race. All right, restart number two. Let's hope this one goes a little bit better than the last one down here on hard difficulty instead of legend difficulty. All right, let's see what we got. So right now showing us in uh, 24th position. Still trying to get that sound where I want it. I uh, really can't hear. I was on the rev limiter there. Oh, look out. Self is all over the place. 
All right, I would like to get away from him if possible. Looks like he is having some issues here early in the race. Yeah, these guys are still there. a good bit slower than they were first time We're around. So half second in qualifying, it looks like that is bearing out in the Five race as well. And just giving us a chance to do some We're racing. Low, All right, clear low. That's what I was waiting on. Wow. Yeah, I'm now. off the gas quite a bit, even for me at this track, as slow as we are right now. Got one up top. All right, look out. Stay low. Oh, Car Fogelman out, having some line. issues. Yeah, these guys, uh, Tom Jeski really wants to get in this bottom groove. Still there. All right, too bad for him. I'm trying to pass him. Careful, still there. All right, there we go. Let's try to pass some of these guys and get a little bit farther forward. Maybe it will start to clear out a little bit for us, start to thin out. We can there. race one or two cars at a time rather than four or five. All right, you're clear there. All right, we are clear. 19th position, we'll take it. A little bit higher than I thought we were going to be. So we'll see if that Looking continues. All right, so the 45, I believe that's Majeski. He's got a run on us, so I gave him room. Clear all around. The AI can be very aggressive when trying to pass, so I do not want to block them. Unless we're down to last lap, last corner, then we're going to fight it out for a victory, a top 10, something like that. But uh, we're not going to be fighting it out here on lap four in stage one. Are there on the outside? You can see these guys have more, a lot more straightaway speed than we do, but we're ha holding our own pretty much through the corners for the most part. So what we need is just some more straightaway speed, and we should have that beginning with the next race because now we're in the process of working on two cars at once, which means we can double up the efforts of all of our employees and really have an opportunity to get some stronger trucks and hopefully be One able to use that max difficulty. Air. You can see coming up behind us here. Looking inside now. All right, you're clear there. All right, he was looking, then he wasn't. All right, so 20th position, still not terrible. You can see the, the truck that passed us, I forget who it was now, but they have moved on. So they definitely had a lot more speed than we did. And I believe the same thing is going to be no point that stage. here for the 45 left. as we move forward. So 20th position here in stage number one. Obviously, that's not going to get us any stage points, but uh, not bad. We got an opportunity to see where we stand as far as speed and not terrible. We're in the middle of the pack. Uh, we are not going to pit. And go ahead and advance on. Looks like nobody pitted. Didn't think they would, but... Be nice to see a few very aggressive green. trucks from time to be time right that here. do pit, get some fresh tires. Uh, if that's going to happen, that Inside. will probably happen after stage two, would be my guess. Because you can see our tire percentages still up in the mid 90s. So definitely not worn now. at all. Uh, but here after this stage, seven laps, we'll probably have. Ooh, look out. Raleigh Herbst uh, not enjoying the bumps, it would appear. Stay high, stay high. That's one good thing about the Heat 4 setup at this track. The bumps really aren't much of an issue, if at all. In fact, most of the time I end up uh, almost just forgetting about them. All right, I think we're clear on the inside. All right, the 45 truck struggling a little bit right now. I was going to try to get under him right there. Coming off the corner, he blocked me very briefly. Still so you there. can see if we had a little bit more, a little bit more engine, then I think we would move up several Careful, positions here because that's where they've got us. Down the, the straightaway, these guys are just pulling away from us. Go, but in the corners, we're fine. In fact, for this part of the pack, uh, around mid-pack, 
Uh, we're actually pulling them through the corners. There you can see big run on the 45. Truck's handling just fine, given all of our circumstances. Still there. Love to see those trucks running right up by the wall through the corners. I just really wish that that was the uh, a faster option at more tracks. A few tracks, uh, you can definitely do it, but uh, Vegas, I haven't been able to make it work for all-out speed. Stay low. All right, so now we're duking it out with Ty Majeski. Down the straightaways, he's got our number. In the corners, right, we got his. Got one outside now. So about halfway through stage number two. Stay at the bottom here. Yeah, much like Daytona, we just need somebody to get out and push. Just to give us a little help down the straightaway. We haven't been close enough, really, for anybody to draft off of. But yeah, Majeski definitely not getting through the corners as well as we are. You can see in the top right-hand corner, our goal is to finish 30th or better. So we're definitely looking good for that. And so far, I would have to say the difference between uh, hard difficulty and... Uh, max difficulty or legend difficulty is pretty good. Uh, personally, I would like to see more difficulty levels. I'm not sure why they got away from uh, the numerical system for career mode. Because I think that would really work a lot better. Because just having, you know, three, four, or five difficulty levels means that there's probably going to be a sizable gap. And in this case, we went from legend difficulty not even being able to keep up with the field to now we're running mid-pack. Or pretty close to it anyway by yeah, moving down one difficulty level so it's having the desired effect but uh, why not just use the numerical system I mean it's got its own set of issues really but I still feel like it would be a much better fit all right so we're finishing up final few corners can I get close enough to time Majeski no He's going to have enough speed through the corner. Yeah, he's going to easily stay in front of us. So we'll be in 21st position. So again, right here around mid-pack, give or take. And you can see our tires still looking pretty good. we got 20 laps remaining. Does anybody come in to pit is the real question. Um, I'm thinking, no, let's don't pit. I want to see how these tires wear out. Uh, but again, very balanced setup. That's what I was going for. And sure enough, doesn't look like anybody pitted, uh, particularly in front of us. Hopefully some green. of these guys behind us pitted for All some tires. Now. All right, guys. Let's everybody get up to speed, nice and clean. Stay out the bottom. Everybody's all compressed in here, the starts. Uh, usually I like to spread yeah, everybody really out a little bit there. more on the starts due to some AI behavior issues. Right now we're using compressed Still starts. There. And so far so good. The AI have definitely had some brake checking opportunities, you but... You're clear. All right, you're clear there. All right, there's our buddy Ty Majeski right in front of us. Trying to hug this bottom pretty tight. Uh, we don't have the speed to run uh, any higher. It'll be uh, several races before we're able to upgrade our truck enough to have the horsepower to get up there and run. All right, there's Sheldon Creed. We saw him quite a bit at Daytona. He ended up with a really good finish, if memory serves me correctly. All right, let's see what these guys do here in the turn. Yep, I thought Majeski might go straight to the top. That's gonna cost him a lot of speed through the corner. And let's see if he can make that back up on the straight. All right, I'm gonna get out of it a little bit early on corner entry. Because I wasn't exactly sure what Creed was gonna do. All right, so he's gonna complete that pass. And now, 
we're back to battling Majeski. So where we got 14 laps remaining. At this point, it's hard for me to tell when we're losing a lot of grip due to tire wear, simply because we weren't very fast to begin with. So it's hard to tell what's missing as far as tire grip. It really feels about the same. I have no idea what lap times we're running. Haven't really been paying attention. But like I said, I don't feel like we've lost a whole lot. Oh, nice run here on Majeski. We're able to get to his bumper. But that's about it so far. If he'll stay up on top, though. Stay at the bottom. No, nope, he's going to have enough to pull us off the corner. In fact, quite a bit of extra off the corner. Oh, we got some guys coming up quick from behind us. Hold your line. Got one inside. Got one outside now. You got room. You're clear there. Those guys appeared in my rearview mirror very quickly. Now we still have the draft partners on, which I normally turn off once you get off the uh, Daytona and Talladega Inside. tracks, but uh, I haven't seen that Inside. pop up just yet, and I hope it doesn't, because the last thing we need is somebody running into our back bumper going through the corner. here all right so who was that it was Raphael Lassard and can't tell who the other truck is from there. here can't remember is that Riley careful still there yeah these guys should not be this far back in the field Kyle Busch will and not be happy about that You can see big run on Lassar here. Careful, still there. I'll try to get to his inside. Can we hold it through the corner though? That is the real question. Careful, still there. You can hear I'm definitely out of the gas Careful, uh, on entry. Not because the car is not handling, it's just that's the nature of the beast right now. Don't really have the uh, the grip to drive it in any deeper. All right, so it seems like every stage we're losing about a position. Still there. So twentieth to twenty-first, now twenty-second. But anywhere in here, I'm going to be perfectly happy with our finish. All right, these green flag runs, you can see somebody coming up behind us. That might have been, judging briefly off the paint scheme that I saw, might have been Natalie Decker. So you see her in the rearview mirror riding on the high side. So that means she ought to have plenty of momentum coming toward us. In fact, yeah, here she comes. I'm gonna try to give her a lane up there. All right, let's see who that is. Who is that passing Still us? Still there. Stay low, stay low. Well, that's definitely not Natalie Decker. Okay, that's Fogelman, okay. Fogelman's got a burst of speed here as we finish up the race. All right, now I'm looking in our rearview mirror. The AI seemed to be really good on a long run. And for me, again, truck still feels perfectly fine. A 
really no issues with the handling other than we need some people to get out and push we get that taken care of we'll be in good shape five laps to go setup is doing exactly what I asked it to do which is be stable and be balanced not dealing with any really loose or tight conditions uh, and if I were dealing with either one of those stay I would low, have to low. just simply adjust the way I'm driving the truck Look at the run that Fogelman gets off the, the high side through the corners. You can see as far as pure speed through the corner, we pull him through the corner, but on the straightaway, he has plenty of speed. Especially off of turn four here. Last time he got a great run through. All right, so we're breaking even as far as speed through the corner. But now off the corner, like he shot out of a cannon. All right, who is that coming up behind us? Let's see. Really don't want to pull up the uh, the menus to find out. Look at the tires. Look at the standings. Any of that stuff. It would be nice if my spotter would tell me a lot of this stuff, but uh, unfortunately, Inside. that is John Hunter, I believe. Yes, indeed, in the 8 truck. A little different paint scheme than I'm used to for that truck. I like this Careful. one a lot better than the, uh, the normal black. You can see he's not giving me a whole lot of room down here. He's giving me a little. But he's pinching me down, to, uh, which is particularly effective uh, in mid-corner and on exit. By holding me down uh, mid-corner, if I were trying to diamond the corner, it would really take that op option away from me. And then on exit, uh, it keeps me from being able to go all the way out to the, the wall. Here. Haven't really been doing that anyway, so it's not really affecting me a whole lot. But normally, trying to carry max speed, you would want to go all the way out to the wall, something like that. And that's why we're here. All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. We lost some spots there toward uh, the very end. Speed rating really doesn't mean anything to me at this point of the career. But 24th position, we will take it. So that's another notch in our belt, another race uh, under our belt in the career mode. And that's more money to be earned. So let's go ahead and move forward, see what we got. All right, so what kind of money does that give us? $25,659 for that 24th place finish. Add in our sponsor and merch payouts, a total $30,469. So now... And we're going to try not to look at those rims, by the way. Those rims that are not the proper color. <laughs> but you can see just the difference in the payout between Las Vegas, which has a very nice payout all on its own, and Daytona. So Daytona is a huge payout. So it definitely, definitely is worth your time and effort to maximize your performance at Daytona. Unfortunately, in the trucks, uh, if we only spend one season in the trucks, we won't get to run anymore at Daytona so we kind of miss out on the opportunity to take a fully upgraded truck there unless of course we continue to do truck races as we progress through career which is always an option and something that we may very well do but 30,469 is our take home right now point standings we drop back to 15th which is still not the end of the world look at Natalie Decker uh, Natalie Decker I should say right in front of us there Ross Chastain behind us uh, that can't be good because he should definitely be farther up than that. All right, so as we finish things up, uh, let's see. Fastest lap, 32.3, which not too bad. It'll be a little while before we'll be able to run those types 
of lap times. Season standing 15th. So now we're ready to finish the event. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And stay tuned for more career mode gameplay of NASCAR Heat 5.